Developing the All right, that's uh, fine. The sisters are here. We've been having back stage conversation. <laughs> and the child mother, you already heard the voice, but officially she is here putting on this red pretty hair, looking all gorgeous as usual. Oh my god, it's such a pleasure to have you again on the sister sister show, child nurturer, phenomenal woman. Oh my god, Maggie, welcome to the sister sister show today. Thank you, Jojo. See, yeah. for those who are on radio listening somewhere, mm -hmm. Jojo has made you salivate way too much it over is. this hair. You yeah. see this hair? <laughs> see, if you want to see this hair that, is, that Jojo is eyeing, I hope I live here in peace. You want to see this red it's hair? You need to get so on my Instagram on so handle yeah. Omelo Gonadi. Yeah. At Omelo Gonadi. Just go to my Instagram handle. I've been trying to see what Jojo is saying because yeah, I don't know. Live on Instagram. I don't know. Fans, All right. So, 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 so. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's the topic? We were having like um back end for those for the benefit of those on radio mm -hmm. who are not on the Instagram live. We're having a a back a in house back end discussion. Yeah. So I was saying um so it, it, a few days ago I jumped up in bed early wee hours of the morning. I, I it was a dream and it had to do with my son. And of course you know when you have things I, I couldn't exactly call it a nightmare nightmare. But there was something funny about the dream. I jumped up and you know the the first reaction you start praying. So yeah. I made some affirmations. I prayed and but then I started to process the dream. What is this dream trying to tell me? Yeah. You know, what is this dream about? So yeah. And it made me start thinking, yeah, so over over time I was saying that I've I've been trying to like raise a tribe of parents okay parents who are in interested who want to raise their children to be balanced wholesome mm -hmm. so when it comes to mental health they are top notch mentally emotionally a lot of people don't understand the 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 the, the line between mental balance and emotional yeah, sure. balance mm -hmm. they are different yeah. true right mm -hmm. so mentally you're okay emotionally you're okay um psychologically you see these three things are different mental health emotional health psychological health they are all different and then spiritually so yeah we we want to we want to raise a community of parents who are able to raise such such kinds of children mm -hmm. and these kinds of children would not be exceptional they won't be the exceptions they'll become the normal kinds of children so when you see such children who are balanced like that because like, ah your son is this your daughter is that no they shouldn't be exceptional normal. they should be normal and so are there parents out there who really want to raise these kinds of children who are not just academically brilliant yeah. who are not just in church all the time who also have a good mental balance who are able to tackle on life and then don't quickly run to go and pray about a thing without understanding the the need to act all right and be equipped to act as they pray right who are who are able to handle peer pressure and intimidation yeah. And you know all these things that are coming at our children. You know the world is getting. You know this thing they said in the Bible: the heart of man is desperately wicked. Yeah. <laughs> the world is getting more and more desperately wicked. wicked. There are a whole lot more humans right now who are wicked than we could have had five years ago, three years ago, two years ago. Heck, even last year. Because a lot of things are going wrong. How much prepared are your children to face these things mm. that come at them every day? Yeah. These days, you know, there are things there are things that children are experiencing now that it took you as a parent listening somewhere twenty years in your early adulthood, mid adulthood to experience. Sure. But your children are experiencing those things no. at ten, mm. at eight. How prepared the world isn't waiting for your child to grow up. 
So they're not reserving these experiences for them to grow up and come and meet. No, they are happening. Pushing at your children with all these things. Mm -hmm. So what are your efforts? What efforts can you make as a parent to find that your child is equipped enough to handle this barrage of experiences that are coming at him yeah are you do you can you raise your child to be that exceptional child who would be the norm mm -hmm. what are the things you can do so let me tell usually i'll say let me tell you a story but that story is let me tell you the dream i had so mm -hmm. in that dream we were home that home looked different you know how dreams can be mm -hmm. we were home my son and i mm -hmm. and so he had this family friends visit um to it's siblings, two of them, mm. were coming in. And then I was saying something to him um, that you should listen, what, 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 whatever I was saying to him. And then his friend, two these siblings, siblings. one comes in before, the, or the first one comes in, the first one is his age mate, the second one is maybe like four or five years older than him. Mm. The, his age mate comes in first. Mm. And then he's saying, hey, they calls his name and he's saying something. And I turned to him and I said, but I've told you, but I was telling you that you should pay attention to this. And then I hit him across his face mm. i have i said not a, a slap mm. i didn't give him a slap okay. i hit him smack across his face and i said i told you i told you why would you do that you don't listen and i was saying it under my breath like i was muttering mm. you know how you like the wicked heart is <laughs> like and I, oh, I don't yeah. do that mm. as in i don't and I beat him. I said, I was telling you. Like, well, listen, now, here now. Well, what's, what's wrong with you? And then his friend was watching. You know, I'm still talking to him on top of the, the um, you know, the chiding that I was chiding him and the subtle hittings. And I was following him around. And then, then his, the, his friend's um, brother, older brother, walks in. Yeah. And he's still saying something to him. They're actually asking him something or reminding him about something. And I go like, that's right. I, I followed him. And that hitting across his face, I did it several times. And then I was calling him about and telling him, but this is what I'm saying. And they are watching me doing that to him. Yeah. And still talking. To, they didn't stop talking to him mm -hmm. they continued talking to him mm -hmm. and he was now looking down okay. taking in all the beating that i was the hitting that i was hitting at him mm -hmm. listening to them ask him the questions they were asking him answering them and also trying to explain to me why well, I'm, I'm probably just upset. You know, it was a lot. And he was taking order, looking in. And then I jumped out of, I jumped up from in, in my bed. I came out of it. I was like, no, 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 I can't treat my child like this. No. Yeah, and I started, I was like, what's going on? I started to, I prayed. Mm. I prayed because he's off in boarding school. And I was like, no, no, a child shouldn't be treated. This was me talking to myself. No, a child shouldn't be treated this way. A child shouldn't be treated this way. Why? Why? I was talking to myself in bed in middle, maybe like 2 a.m. And then I started thinking about it. After I, I prayed for a while, I thought about it for a while, and I couldn't get back to sleep. It was 2 a.m. That was the end of sleep. And I started thinking. So, most times sometimes choose which one applies to you as a parent wherever you're listening from we think it is okay to scold our children mm. at that point where they have done something, something wrong irrespective of where it is who it's is present. there mm. it is not okay with children, especially in the times in which we find ourselves, as parents, we need a lot of times to learn to practice the pause. Guess what? Our parents who raised us practiced the pause. 
How did they do it? Because when they say, hey, no, they killed me, they hit me. <laughs> Let me. How did our parents practice the force? You see that bombastic <laughs> side eye mm, that your mom thing. gave you <laughs> outside. Mm. That's a style of force with the resources they had Amazing. during their own. Yeah, when you finish this madness you're doing here, mm. yeah, I, I'm a go. Uh, you, 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 yeah, you know you will not be alive inside the house. Mm. So enjoy your <laughs> life while it lasts outside here. That is our parents. Mm. That was them practicing the pause. Do you know what that did? They reserved the lessons for inside. In the comfort of the home where you can learn this lesson privately. Where the lesson is not a conference. Where it is you. Where you don't have to put up any defenses or any barricades to learning yeah. now did they teach in the right way they taught with the rod mm -hmm. that's the resources they had the at the time mm -hmm. well guess what they still did something right they practiced the pause in that dream i did three things wrong the first thing i did was my failure to practice that pause mm. to reserve a lesson for an appropriate time they say this thing about teachable moments teachable moments does not necessarily mean that at that point when that thing is happening you come out it. it is good that for things that are subtle enough to be used as a lesson mm. otherwise it will pay you to note that thing that has occurred at that moment and raise it at a future time mm. sooner or later with the child yeah. and still use that as a teachable moment mm. yeah. the word teachable moment doesn't mean that it is that precise moment in time as an adult please think of times when your spouse or your friend or your boss has told you something that you have done wrong mm. but you say hey, hey and so what is that why they should talk to me like that so oh so the that way they spoke to you is an issue you fail to realize that but you've done something wrong mm. so it is not just about what you have done wrong at that precise moment mm. it's about the way they are drawing your attention to what you have done wrong yeah. and so the key thing here is you need to be with your children. You have to make effort to be kind all the time. Okay. Not right. Not yes. So before I actually proceed to asking you the question, I'm pretty yes. sure a lot of people listening will want to ask one or two questions. So yeah, the phone lines are open right now. We're speaking with a child, not your She's talking about different ways that parents react to um when raise all some children. Raise all some children. And they think it's actually a normal thing, isn't it? And I think it's just the best way to um, react to their children. Because, again, it's my child. I, I see a lot of people arguing that nobody should caution them on how to train or um, teach their children or discipline their children, right? Yes. 0809 or 0704-337-1743. And uh, the WhatsApp number is 0809 If you have have a question you have a com contribution feel free to call us up or drop a whatsapp message maybe you're more your parents listening to us right now and you have a particular way of disciplining your child let us know how it actually works for you or maybe you've actually been you know having this particular um narrative about parenting you know that has that is really contrary to everything the child nurture has really said right now please feel free to talk to us about it now my question is um, in a situation where you are dealing with a child who you have often corrected privately, publicly, but it's not seeming to adhere to what you are saying, your corrections. And of course, you know, the norm, normal thing that our parents are quick to doing is using the rod, right? Because most of them, they've actually written it on a, on a placard, twisted that you cannot um, spare the rod and spoil the child thing in that word or that phrase, right? So they don't joke about using the rod. So how would you advise that a parent should go about those kind of children whom, you know, it's very difficult for them to um, listen to you, you are talking, you are explaining, but you are not listening, you know, 
and you this is just you feeling like the best way you can do that the best way you can react or the best way you can discipline that child is to use the rod and whether it's publicly or openly you just want to you know correct in your own way so how was the best thing like i think this is more okay I'm, I'm, children. can you give me a second to get to your question That's fine. okay fine um I, while i was saying that when i while i was um talking that came to mind mm -hmm. what about children that you've corrected over time mm -hmm. but before i get to answer that question jojo mm -hmm. let me talk about i said there are three things i did wrong in that dream yes. all right mm -hmm. the first one was, was not practice that pause we're thinking that whatever he did needed to be addressed right that minute mm -hmm. otherwise the world will shut down mm -hmm. second thing i did was i beat down tremendously his self-esteem. Yeah. I, I ripped it. It was at the top of the ladder. I held it. I shook it vigorously. I dragged it to the floor and I crumbled it. And I see if it wasn't enough. I, I put fire and I burnt it to ashes. That's what I did to his self-esteem, mm -hmm. his dignity mm -hmm. before his friends, before others. The third thing I did wrong in that dream was to give permission to his friends to disrespect him yeah. at any point they deemed fit That's true. you see this these are three crimes mm. that many parents that a good chunk of parents commit against their children yeah. every single day of that child's life mm. When you do that, you're tampering with three spectrums of the child's growth. Mental health, emotional health, and psychological health. Mm. Mental, emotional, and psychological. You're tampering with these three spectrums. Yeah. And oh, in, in the course of this, I probably will get to define the differences between the mental health of a human, mm. just for those who don't know, the psychological health of a human mm -hmm. and the emotional health of a human mm -hmm. so let me answer a question quickly before i get into that for a child whom you have consistently corrected over a thing that child is always doing wrong yeah. and that child does not listen yeah. at that point when the child now does that thing yeah. and you say okay let you use the rod that's the one the child will hear mm. <laughs> i say this i've said this so many times and i keep saying it i well until sometime early to mid this year mm -hmm. i was that parent who will use the rod guess what you see that rod that i will use i probably use it once a year mm -hmm. twice a year at the maximum mm -hmm. three times a year but if i did Right? Mm -hmm. That once will cover for the entire mm -hmm. year. You say, I won't you kill the child? No, it's not that serious. So at what point do you think that you actually have, always have to use a rod? What is at the point when I use the rod, one thing is definite. I'm frustrated. Guess what? Mm -hmm. It isn't the child that is actually the key um, stressor mm -hmm. or the key thing that is frustrating me. Life is showing me shaggy so just back all the and because the child is the vulnerable human mm -hmm. who is beneath or below or low um, um junior whatever however you want to say this to to you know to to massage your ego yeah below me my subordinates i can let out my frustration mm -hmm. and my anger on, on the child when you check it the times when you really raise the rod on your child, I want you to take a moment and check your emotional state. How are you feeling? Mm. Is it really that child that is doing you? There will be exceptional cases when in the totality it is that child that is doing you, right? There are exceptions. There are some exceptions. Yes. But in most cases, we're, we're frustrated by a conglomerate of other issues that isn't our child. And that frustration is what we let out on the child. Another thing that I would say, you see, rod, that rod, mm. it never achieved the thing. True. Never. You can say, hey, why was it written in the Bible? See, mm. spinning the rod does not mean a physical walloping. 
sometimes have you heard how they say that the tongue oh, no, no, is no, like no. a sword mm-hmm. True. that you can use your tongue is is a good enough rod right. and it doesn't mean to wag it mm. without direction no my father my late father it's i wanted to go into pigeon english right now it is better it is better that my father will sit you down mm-hmm. and no no it's better for your father will wallop you for an hour non-stop mm-hmm. than my father to sit you down and talk to you oh no 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 you would choose to be walloped <laughs> over and over and over again because my father would take time and tell you my daughter do you know mm-hmm. that when you do this, what it can co- one hour you plan not done and you would listen through. You must listen because he would ask you questions intermittently mm-hmm. and you need to respond appropriately. Or the one hour will turn into three hours. Yeah. So you listen. So it's better. So the this the rod mm-hmm. can be what you say to your child. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a physical rod. Mm-hmm. So no, spare the rod and spoil the child. Isn't that wallop? Not Mm -hmm. necessarily. Yes. It won't achieve. And when you 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 resort to using the rod all the time, it means that they would only behave when the rod is there. there. Once the rod is not there, there they don't owe you any atom of behavior. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. Actually, we're running out of time. <laughs> oh my goodness, so red day. It's always the time where we have, when the conversation is going really deeper. <laughs> we lost the call, by the way, so okay. I, I don't know, that person can actually drop a WhatsApp message. 0809 we We are running out of time. In summary, Omelogo, what, what would you advise? You know, I, I just think that sometimes we get that all this is linked to the foundation of how you're yes. raising your kids. True. Because by the time they get to a stage, and you are just tired of doing the talking, because yes. whether we like it or not, this the kids are growing, they are yes. meeting people. You you just sent your son to the boarding house. He, he's he's there expressing different you know life on his own and dealing with you know different things that come to you. And again, the trainings from there from school, I think that sometimes the habit that children form eventually they could be gotten from the environment, yes, the school, the background, the grew up in. So like in summary, the what would you advise? Yes, the foundation. Jojo, you sent me a video over the course of a week, and then you asked me, was how old could that child have been? Four, five, five, five years. Four. A little girl. Yeah. Let's call her five years. Mm-hmm. They're not up to five. Like four years. And then the girl has an attitude like, yes. oh, someone touched my foot. And I said, and I oh, smacked. no. Mm-hmm. I smacked her finger. I said, no, you just don't go my touch food. my food. Mm-hmm. Oh, you hold your hand right there. Mm. And Jojo is asking, is it, is he over, is she overthinking it? Or mm. does the child have an attitude and how can it be fixed? Yes. And I said to Jojo, I said, the child does have an attitude. But guess what? She learned that attitude mm. from a significant parent around her or from media content Mm. that she's constantly exposed to it is not her fault she's not doing anything wrong Mm -hmm. by having an attitude Mm. she's only mirroring her environment how do you fix that Mm. change the content of her environment change if there's an, an adult who she's mirroring The adult is the one that needs a change of attitude or you remove the adult from her vicinity Mm -hmm. and change the content she's exposed to. Mm -hmm. Children are mobs. They would copy, they would, they would, they would unfold via imitation. If they're not imitating other children around them, Mm -hmm. they're imitating the adult around them or they're imitating the little people or the big people that they're seeing on TV Mm -hmm. or on their iPads or all. So if you want to raise a child who is balanced, Mm -hmm. you don't start it in the afternoon or at night. You start from day one. Mm -hmm. So you're going to say, if you are an adult and your child is in day five for instance Mm -hmm. and you did it from day one what are you gonna do you start making deliberate efforts to there there is need as a parent for you to have an access to your child a relationship that is dependable that somebody is dependable your child has to find you dependable Mm -hmm. if your child for any reason does not find you dependable you will be unable to raise that child appropriately i love the word dependable (laughs) 
So to say this is where we actually have to run. It's three o'clock on the DOT. Thank you so much, Child Nurture. It's such a pleasure to have you have this conversation with us. We have learned for every time she comes to talk on the show, I just feel like I should just bet my chest. <laughs> <laughs> In the town red is Doja Cat. My name is Jojo. My name is Abby. And of course, the child natural. We'll do this again next week Wednesday with her. But it's just that we'll see you tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Have yourself a fantastic afternoon. Thank you. Okay, though. Right. So, usually when we're talking about something really serious like this, time will just fly past. Phew! And then we don't even know. Josh, are you going online? Mm-mm. Need your life. Okay. All right. So let me just finish this up a bit, right? See, I was saying, you know, I had to round that up so that the show can end. But this is an inexhaustible topic, right? See, one of the major things that influences how our children turn out is what we deposit or allow to be deposited in our children right if we are for instance i shared my dream at the beginning of this live and then you know i i had this dream i had it like uh today's wednesday i had this dream on monday morning right and i jumped up in bed and i had to analyze the implications of that dream after that dream i had to place a call one of the things I realized is this. I said, I am not that parent to treat my child with such wanton disrespect and disregard and damage. I'm not that parent. But why did this dream come to me like this and me the perpetrator of such? And what does that mean? What did I even do? And I, I, I looked at the implications of what I did with the child. And yes, I, I gave him no, I gave him no opportunity to have a voice of his own because I was in, in, incapable in the dream to practice that pause that is necessary for appropriate lessons to be learned in appropriate ways. That was number one crime. The second crime, I eroded his self-worth his self-esteem his dignity as a person i made him feel worthless and like in the nonsense in front of his friends and i gave permission and authority to his friends to disrespect him anytime they pleased i made him i said to him I am not your safe place. As a parent, you have the primary responsibility to be the safe place for your child. That's your primary responsibility. You're not just the child's provider. You are your child's protector. When something starts to chase him anywhere he is, he should run to his safe place to home you you as a parent should position yourself to be home to be the safety that your child will run to when you are overly criticizing your child you eliminate the opportunity for you to become a safe place are criticisms good yes constructive criticisms every time you treat your child to a thing or to in a particular way i want you to flip the cards and put yourself in your child's position and change the scenario that someone else treated you this way do you know that majority of parents constantly talk to their children with absolute disrespect children are human they come with the same spirit as you come with it's not different they just come as babies and still grow up to be you in the first seven years of a child's life the child forms every city where i'm wiping my mouth everything the child needs to be a man is concrete when i say man i mean human man Human, I don't mean like um, a, a, the, the male gender. I mean like a human being. 
everything a child needs to be a human whole formed entirety of the human that that child will become eventually is set concretized in the first seven years that's when you form not concretize that's when you form the basic foundation for all that child will become as a human being in the future and in those first seven years of your child's life what are you allowing to be deposited in the child mentally where intelligence comes from and brilliance emotionally what determines how a child feels and interprets things psychologically the subconscious of that child and we know i don't know if you all know as you you, you who are listening to me but the subconscious of a human being plays 95 percent of the role in every decision and action that a man takes everything the choice of where to live the choice of spouses the food to eat the the the, the houses to buy the the way to dress up the way they react they interact with human beings around them the kinds of job they decide the kind of house even how they buy uh, whether they will buy rice and chicken or whether they will buy eba uh, and soup the psycho the, the the subconscious mind of a human makes 95% of that call our daily decisions our values our principles the subconscious mind is what determines it the, this conscious mind the one that is talking to you right now the one that you're seeing is just 5% the decisions we make come from the subconscious and that's a psychological aspect how what do you allow to be deposited in your child mentally emotionally psychologically and spiritually the psychology the psychological aspect of a child is where traumas embed you see the trauma that people go through is the psychological spectrum of a human that deals with trauma and so like um abigail mentioned earlier in the program where she said after you've probably been stalked then you start jumping up you start thinking that people are coming after you hey, your, your psychosis you start hallucinating you start thinking everybody wants to kill you then you start deciding ah you're not saying it but inside your head you decided ah let me come out just end my life because this life is not worth living and then you start becoming suicidal right is the psychological spectrum of a human and what are you allowing what are you depositing and what are you allowing to be deposited in your child spiritually you see life today without the spiritual overall being that governs your or that con commands your respect and your allegiance if you don't have that hmm? life without it today <laughs> you'll be in trouble because you would it's like you would run on reserve until you're empty something fills you up it is that supreme being that you recognize it's not by your power or by your might alone there is a supreme power that replenishes you the one that gave you being that created this body that you didn't create it by yourself science didn't create this body by itself something so if you don't if you if you don't recognize and create room for that supreme power you will run on reserve until you're empty you will stop on the road you will have maruders who will attack you devour you and you will be no more so as a parent how are you influencing or controlling what your child is filled with mentally emotionally psychologically and spiritually these are four spectrums that you need to pay attention to as a parent every single day how are you speaking to your child does your child feel respected and acknowledged by you does your child feel important 
in the scheme of things in the family does your child feel listened to does your child have a voice or are you always shouting direct sometimes you might not even shout directives at the child but telling the child what to do how to do it how to think how to breed how to how to don't what do you keep hovering over your parent like a helicopter don't you get tired really do you keep hovering do you even allow the child to use that spirit inside of him that powers him do you even trust your parenting at what point as a parent do you decide that your child is strong enough to stand and act independently what's the range i made that decision for my child i said he's 10 so why did i choose 10 he's 10 he's in boarding school it's happenstance he just is quick enough children finish your business i got into boarding school at 10 i think but that's not the reason why he got into boarding school at 10 it just happened that he was that fast and he's he's in boarding school at this age he's in secondary school at this age but the first seven years as i said earlier being the foundation of a human's life where you lay the foundation for what the the human being will become in future as an adult after the first seven years you have another bracket of three years within the the three years up to age 10 <laughs> is your i don't know why this is making me laugh is where you get to do what they call damage control after year seven the 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 child is the human is 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 quite set but you have that bracket of three years to work on the places where you've left some lapses to change some things to you know have you know get a bit do a bit of some correction but if you leave this child to clock 10 there is what you call a solidification you know when um a a, a mount a, a a volcanic eruption happens and it brings out all that magma and then when the fire eases out it solidifies it becomes a mountain of its own a solid structure that is not movable that you have to hack. that happens at 10. whatever you leave undone up to age 10 you have set like a rock in your child so the ideal point to work on your child mentally emotionally psychologically and spiritually is the first seven years guess what as soon as a child is able to listen to you and understand you and attempt to speak to you i didn't say speak to you in a way you understand though attempt to speak to you that child is basically ready to take corrections on normal things around him he's ready to take corrections to actually have a conversation with you and listen so sometimes you feel like um, they're talking gibberish all we need is calm when you're calm really and you allow you, you you shut out all the things that are coming at you the pressures and from work from relationships from things and you listen to your child you will make sense of everything that child says in that gibberish they have actual conversations with you i don't know how many of you have seen the trending videos of a, a young father who's talking i don't know whether he's with his son yes i think it's a son i was like oh like is it oh yeah <laughs> this one yeah that guy it will mess up then the child will respond and say <laughs> the child is not even up to one or maybe no he's not up to one he's like <laughs> you should be able to do that the child oh yeah that's right yeah you exactly i understand you and then they both watch tv again and then the child the the, the father will say something and he said so you honestly you, you you see he's doing that and the child will respond guess what that's those videos that the, the that young father makes you know pulls in a lot of clicks and views and people laugh they find it hilarious and say it's quite entertaining 
But guess what? When they watch that video, the reason they find it quite entertaining is because there seems to be a conversation going on between those two persons, despite the fact that the child seems like he's talking gibberish. So some people leave till a child is three and can talk fully and make sense, be lazyable, you know, to start making corrections. No. Once a child is able to feel, to summon up his own will, to move his legs, to move his hands, to speak to you, even though it seems like it's gibberish, that child is ready to take corrections. All you need to do as a parent is to find age appropriate, age appropriate language to pass on these messages or these corrections to your child, right? And so you, as I said, to wrap this all up, to create a wholesomely balanced child who across the full spectrum of a mental, emotional, psychological, and uh, spiritual spectrums, balanced, top-notch. You have to be deliberate. One thing is important. <clears throat> we can only give from the abundance of what we have. If we don't have that abundance, it will be near impossible to give it. Because it's, it's what we have that we give. We can't give other people stuff. It's what we have. So yes, you as a parent might have had crazy experiences that makes it impossible for you to give anything other than you're giving. But you need to pay attention to the fact that every child that passes through you is a gift that you ought to preserve for the giver. They don't belong to you, right? So you have an ability to nurture appropriately. Otherwise, a child will not come to you. Each child is a perfect gift for the right mother and father. And for, for, for you to be given that gift, it means you have the capacity to preserve that gift. Sometimes... The horrible experiences, quote unquote, that we say that we have had is a preparation for what we ought to do, the tasks that fall to us. And so what your duty is as a parent who has had some really unpleasant experiences that has filled your own bucket with dirt and crap and all, what you need to do is find ways to turn all that sour lemon into juicy lemonade because you can and for the sake of your children for the future generation you need to find ways to stop the vicious cycle when you don't you see that cycle that happened with you you repeat it with their, your children, your children repeat it with their own children, and that's why the world is becoming more and more evil today. So, are you desirous to raise wholesome children? Do you want to do that? Because if you do, I have taken it upon myself to build a community, a tribe of parents who would do this. There is no exceedingly perfect parent parenting is a school we keep learning we keep evolving and what one parent falls short in there is another parent who has it in abundance and this cross healthy cross fertilization conscious and healthy would help each and every one of us grow and get better so if you're interested in joining a community of parents, you don't have to. You have to be interested because in that community, there is only one, one, one vital purpose. To fill the buckets of our children appropriately. To give them the right things that would help them to become wholesomely balanced and ready to take on life. To create the kind of society that we actually deserve because we've lost it completely. 
It is our children that can, that will fill up the society with us and we will give them the, the backing, the foundation, the opportunity to fill up appropriately. So the focus is the well-being of our children. If you're interested in joining this tribe, I'll leave a link on my bio. I think I will leave that link permanently. It should be there already, but I will cross-check. I'll leave that link permanently so that you can just click on and you can join the community. It's on WhatsApp. It's small. We don't, we don't want to pull a crowd. We want to pull a purposeful crowd, people who are really interested. Our rules are very few. Our rules of engagement are very few. But the, the important things on that, those rules are things like kindness above rightness, things like focus, things like coming as you are, things like being considered for the other parents, being mindful of other people's feelings. Those are kind, the kinds of rules that we have there. And so anybody who is unable at any point to, you know, um, function by these rules, we will let the person go. Because we want a place where we fill up a bucket that is full of so many positive things so that we are capable to fill the buckets of the children in our care. Okay? So this is it for today. Remember, if you're interested in joining a community of parents who are raising wholesome children, there's a link that you can check in my bio so that you can join this community. But for now, I got to say adios, amigos. Oscar, thank you for joining. Oh, look at everybody. Oma, where are you? Ah, see plenty of people here. Radley, thank you. Kene OJ, Osaze Godwin, thank you so much for joining. Oma, where are you? Okay. Nafi said, my pressing, my pressing. It's so good to have you join me. BDME OJ, thank you. A well Zim school, 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 I like your name, whatever that is. Thank you. Mesky King 01. I'm mad at you, Shay, you know. Well, let's leave that for another day. Oh, thank you so much for joining. I hope this was very helpful. I hope you have things to learn. I would do this more often. Focusing on raising wholesome children, not just, you know, Focusing on raising hope. We need to raise hope something. We need to build a brand new society. One child at a time. And this is my tough. And I'm going to occupy it with full authority and full intention. Okay? Adios, adios. You have a perfectly great time. Before, when I'm on air like this, on Wednesday, I'll say, Oh, I got to run. It's, uh, I have to go and do school runs. You know, I'm not doing school runs anymore. My child is in boarding school, so I can just go and do another function. I raised a child to become 10 years old and filled with enough tools that he can function out there without me being afraid that the externals will corrupt his internals. His internals are fortified. But guess what? I'm not done for every time my child, my 10-year-old, current 10-year-old, will come on holiday, I will check the things he has gone through in boarding school. So that I, will, I will pick through it. We have a lot of conversations. That is vital if you want to raise a wholesome child. Conversations are a must. So for every time he's on holiday, even if it is um, two days, uh, what do you call that thing? Meet him. Meet him. Even if it's two days, I will pick through. We will talk. I would want to know what he has picked up, what he's been able to do with the one. Who did he influence? Who influenced him? I will check that and I will continue to fortify his internals. It is a constant, consistent, ceaseless effort because the world is not waiting for you. He's not doing it once, one touch. No. The, the world out there is constantly coming at your child. So you have to constantly fortify your child. All right? Yeah. For now, I got to go. Hello. Ciao, ciao. My name is Omelo Go Nadi. Hello. I'm the children nurturer. And I got to let you go now. Thanks for joining. And see you next time. Bye.